Hey you guys, it's Brits tonight. We're here to talk about a variety of different things. I posted a poll over on my, my community tab um, earlier and I decided to kind of gauge to see what y'all wanted to see and the majority of y'all wanted to have multiple topics in a single video. So I will put timestamps down below, but we have a whole lot to go through and I'm also gonna add a bonus topic of an Amish a fake Amish girl that was basically allegedly cosplaying as somebody who was Amish, Mennonite, plain, um, and everybody is all up in arms about this. So I figured I would throw that in as well. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so let's start at the top with our favorite train wreck, Colleen Ballinger. She has decided to, in my opinion, she is slowly reintroducing Miranda Sings to her audience. And if y'all don't know anything about Miranda, it is a super problematic, ableist character that Colleen Ballinger created over 10 years ago and basically put all of her darkest um, darkest thoughts and most twisted um, things that she found funny she would throw up behind this character and uh, she made millions off of it I've covered Miranda at length in many other videos so um, you know if you're interested in why Miranda is problematic please just take a look and you can you can find the videos they're all out there not only from me but from other people as well Miranda is extremely um it, it's almost alarming like once you realize what Colleen Bellinger has done by creating this character Miranda the reason that we're talking about Miranda in this video right now is because she just posted this vlog I have to talk like Miranda all day and she puts the kind of typical Miranda face in her thumbnail of this video minus the lipstick and the outfit so this video has 36,000 views 2.7 thousand likes to 3.2 thousand dislikes and the Miranda part of this video is like literally a minute of a 20 minute vlog. Miranda. You Miranda, every day lately. Miranda, Mama. You're Miranda, since this weekend. You will only talk to me if I am doing the Miranda impression. Miranda, Miranda. Woo! If I talk like me, he yells at me and says, be Miranda. You wanna jump? I want to. Okay. Be Miranda. Oh, you hear this? Miranda. Be Miranda. Be Miranda. You want me to be Miranda? What the heck? <laughs> what the heck are you doing with the grains? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> be Miranda? Yeah. Why? Hey, come back out. I think that Colleen, like a lot of other YouTubers, is using the upset to her own advantage. And we've seen this through many other vlog clips since she's come back. She is using things that people are legitimately upset about and have every right to criticize so that she gets more traffic on her video and more people talk about her. And listen, before I dissect the rest of her vlog, I would like to just put out there. I have heard a lot of people say, oh, well, just stop giving her attention. Stop giving gypsy rose attention stop giving the doherty dozen attention stop giving whoever attention and maybe they'll just go away but that is not my role as a commentary channel my role as a commentary channel is not to ignore problematic creators and think that one day they might just go away because i think without commentary there is zero accountability bare minimum i am having the conversation that i feel needs to be had and that's all I can do with my own content. We can have a conversation about it and hopefully people will continue to stay informed on why Colleen Bellinger is such an awful individual. So while I understand and I appreciate the opinion that y'all have, the, those of you who think of it like that, 
Um, that's just not the way that I kind of operate my channel. I'm going to talk about things that I'm passionate about or interested in, or once in a while, maybe something that I came across that might be entertaining to lighten the mood. Um, but I, I'm not going to simply stop talking about somebody because it, because it is no longer the popular thing to do within the commentary or tea space. So I hope and I imagine that most of y'all understand that, but I wanted to put that in the beginning of the video. The other thing that I noticed very early on in this video um, is she's wearing a Malibu Barbie sweatshirt. Is that a dig at Trisha Paytas? Tell me how y'all feel about that down below. Trisha, um, you know, has been treated very poorly by Colleen um, numerous different times. And I just, she's done this before by wearing Barbie, Barbie merch, um, the Malibu Barbie sweatshirt. She might've worn this before. I can't really recall off the top of my head. Um, but I did find that to be interesting. Is that a way for her? You know, she, she does know how to make subtle digs. And unless you're fully, uh, versed in, how problematic and gross Colleen Ballinger's actions have been. Um, some people might just see this and think, oh, it's just somebody tumbling rocks and being obsessed with their rocks again and not understand kind of the, the message that she might or might not be trying to send. In this video, there's a whole lot of rock talk. There's a whole lot of polishing and processing rocks and all of that kind of stuff, random singing, which is totally normal for her. Um, I found this interesting because during the little part where she talks about Miranda, she's showing her kids love and she's hugging and all of this kind of stuff. And I don't know, for me, I've always found this to be so awkward with family vloggers when they sit there and include that in the vlog. Like, I get it. You love your kids. Your kids love you. Why does it have to be filmed and posted on social media? To me, it, it, it almost comes off as more disingenuous if you're um, constantly posting that to social media. It's almost like you're trying to convince yourself of something and have your audience validate it for you. She gets into audience validation later in this video, but you know, she does a little Miranda voice or whatever. And like I said, that is a grain of sand in comparison to the length of the, to the length of the vlog. To me, I think this is her sending out the first hints that Miranda is coming back and my kids think that she's so funny. I have to bring her back. I can't put Miranda away forever, even though I was canceled for being um, inappropriate and creepy. I can't put Miranda away. Um, you know, she, she knows that she can make money off Miranda. And at the end of the day, I think that that is Coley Mellinger's main concern is how is she going to get back to even half of what she used to be financially? She goes on this little tangent about how she can't say the word monotony and had to include that in the vlog for whatever reason. She shows the bath that she ran for her kids. I think that's weird. She didn't show her kids actually in the bath, but why? Like the internet doesn't need to see a bath that you're drawing up for your kids. They don't need to see your kids bedrooms. They don't need to see your kids pajamas. They don't need to see your kids undergarments. I've talked about all that before, so I won't completely rehash it in this video, but it's just, it's weird. That's not for the internet. It's for your children. Protect them for once. In a recent video, she shared that she was suffering with a migraine and she says she loves validating comments that she received about her migraine and people kind of sharing their experiences and their remedies and how they got through dealing with migraines and stuff like this. Um, she says she wants to hug fans through the screen. This is all so weird, but I want to focus on the validating comments. It's exactly what I've said all along. Colleen Ballinger builds, nurtures, and thrives off of the people that are still parasocially connected to her and willing to blatantly ignore everything that she has been exposed for with receipts, with the proof, and with the evidence. Aside from all of her boring rock talk that she usually does, she did in this video, 
She talks about this ugly black rock and how she was going through the worst depression episode ever and mentions an entire team helping her and she had somebody who was well-versed in trauma and she had a therapist and all of this kind of stuff. Um, you know, here here's the thing. Colleen Ballinger was canceled, I say canceled in air quotes, over the summer because people came forth with their um, experience having dealt with her. And she was exposed through group chats, DMs, text messages, sending NSFW images to people who it was completely unsolicited, inappropriate, and gross. I understand depression, I understand anxiety and mental health struggles, and as I've always said, I will sympathize with people who go through those um, struggles in life, but I, I can't really feel bad for somebody who orchestrated hate campaigns and bullying of people that were no longer in her corner, somebody who constantly cries victim and simultaneously they're being toxic behind the scenes and utilizing their fan base to attack these people that they want to have attacked. It's just, it's the sheer hypocrisy and it's the constant victim narrative that I hear from Colleen that really just... I can't hold any pity for the woman. I, I just can't. I hold pity for the people that she negatively um, impacted. And I am so glad and I am so proud to support those people. And that's why I have, I have voiced my support for them numerous times over the last almost three years. My first video on Adam McIntyre was three years ago when his first video came out just in case, and it's not to be a broken record, but it's just, if you, if this is the first video that you're seeing of mine, you know, I voiced support for Adam back in, what was that, 2020, when, when his first video came out. She also thanks Rox in this video for making her feel like living on days that she did not want to live, and I don't even know I don't want to second guess that, but at the same time, like, I, I just don't believe Colleen and I think that she's a professional victim. So if Rox helped her live again, then fine. But I would think that maybe your children, maybe your children would have given you the will to live. Um, but she certainly focuses on Rox a whole lot. So that's the whole deal with her dumpster fire of a, um, vlog that she posted really really hard time and i was probably uh the, well i mean not probably i definitely was the most depressed i've ever been i was not doing well and i had like a team of people helping me through this episode i was kind of going through of life that was dark and my trauma specialist therapist whatever had suggested i go to the beach and look for seashells because i had mentioned once prior that i loved looking at for seashells on the beach and it helped me to feel calm so she recommended i go do that again and i went to the beach to look for seashells there were no seashells it was a gross high tide dirty yucky seaweed fly infested beach day i decided to not be upset about the fact that there were no seashells and it wasn't going how I wanted. And I was like, okay, well then I'm gonna look at what I have available to me. And right now what I have available to me is these ugly rocks that I'm sitting on. So I'll just look through the freaking rocks. And I started to get interested and curious about the different patterns on the rocks and the different colors in the rocks. And then I found this one black rock that was just like calling to me. And I was like, I don't know what it is about that rock, but I need that rock. And I took it home and I looked it up on my little like rock identifier app. And it said that it was an Apache tear. So then I looked up what an Apache tear was and it says Apache tears are precious little stones that are said to be formed from the tears shed by women who tragically lost their husbands in battle. An Apache tear has more gentle energy than regular black obsidian, making it a perfect choice when we need to accept life-shattering truths. Apache Tear helps us to process through negative emotions thoroughly so we can understand the depth of our new emotional landscape. It encourages us to feel the pain rather than trying to get rid of it as quickly as possible. It reminds us that pain is there because love is there and that sweeping the pain away too quickly is a disservice to the love. Apache Tear encourages us to grieve honestly and then to release the grief when we are ready. It also gives us courage and support if we need to forgive ourselves or others. It offers a steady rock to cling to when intense emotions threaten to sweep us away. Ultimately, the Apache Tear's goal is to help us to accept the new reality and find our way back to peace. So when I read all of that, I lost it and I just, I, I appreciate that like there are stones and rocks that have history and story and meaning so they hold it like whenever I felt you know like things were hard and this one little rock like really truly like helped me so much and it helped open up my eyes to this whole like obsessive intense passion for rocks and nature and got me outside and got me in nature and got me breathing fresh air and helped me to be excited about something and look forward to something instead of just waking up every day um wishing that I hadn't so this little rock 
I want to touch really quick on the Doherty Dozen. The Doherty Dozen has a new stream of revenue that has been opened up with their oldest child who is now a legal adult. He's become a full-on what I guess he might imagine as becoming a, an influencer. He is doing cameos. He is doing um, constant paid partnerships over on TikTok, promoting all kinds of random garbage that nobody needs. Kind of like his mother does. So, you know, they, they are very similar in that manner. I am not here to bully or make fun of the cameos that this, you know, um, kid from the Doherty household is doing. Even though he's not a kid, he's now an adult. I'm not here to bully him or make fun of him for that. But what I would like to say is I find it very interesting how we are seeing in real time a kid who grew up in an environment of being exploited, being used for videos, their parent constantly on their phone, their parent constantly engaging in comments, their parents constantly um, filming new TikToks and doing brand sponsorships and stuff. That's automatically what this kid is doing. And I realize that we're in the age of social media and that's just kind of the way that some things go now. But as, as far as the content that I have seen from him, I don't think that this is genuinely what he wants to do. And I do wonder if Alicia allegedly might be encouraging and kind of coaching him to do this instead of going out and getting a job. Just for context, I will play a couple of the cameos that have been floating around on TikTok. And again, I want to make it very clear, it is not to make fun of him or um, be mean. But for context, I want y'all to watch a couple of these videos and tell me, do you feel like this is somebody who genuinely wants to be in the influencer space? Or is this something that he's just doing it because his mom does it and this is the environment that he's grown up in for the last several years? Hey, Braylee, I hear that you're going through a breakup right now and the guy doesn't even like you, um, which makes sense because he just broke up with you. Um, but you just got to get over it you just got to go hang out with your friends hang out with the people that love you okay peace hi james nate walker and carson uh i hope you guys have a great day uh also uh, i have a quick question for carson what type of species are you what kind of creature peace uh hey uh lila brooke russell um I hear that you have been really sad about passing of your father. Um, I am very sorry for your loss, and um, everything will be okay. You just gotta you you will get through this. Uh, but I also hear that you watch my videos and you loved watching them with your dad. So I hope this will help you get through um, this hard time. Hey guys, I hear that you guys are having a party with Sunny D in it. I'm so sorry that. That I didn't wear the Sunny D uh, fit. Um, does not fit me anymore. I am too skinny for it now. That is when I was 350 pounds. So that shirt was a 4XL. I got rid of it. Um, but I hear that you have that post. I hear, hear that you have a big um, poster of me dressed in that outfit. I appreciate it. And I hope that you guys have the best um, day ever. Peace. So let's move on to Lauren the Mortician. Lauren the Mortician loves to post and delete. She's kind of like Gypsy Rose Blanchard in that case um, because she loves to post and delete stuff and act like, oh, that never happened, even though everything is saved, screenshotted, and shared on other sites like Reddit and other TikTok pages. She, she's a dirty deleter. Typical coward behavior, but aside from, you know, bullying commentary channels and getting herself involved in a very, in my opinion, frivolous lawsuit, she decided to post um, answers to questions. It says educational purposes. 
Somebody asked, do people smell like refried beans after cremation? And evidently this stemmed from a conversation that Bunny XO was having on her podcast. Lauren decided to insert her into insert herself into this conversation and allegedly just so happened to get this question and it's a whole thing. What I want to say is if you are somebody who is using your degree, your resume, your life experience, your whatever, and you want to post content and say educational purposes, don't ever come on social media and try to post something like this saying educational while you are talking about something that is as sensitive as somebody being cremated. Literally, they are at the end of their life and you are sitting there and answering some question that you allegedly got saying, do they smell like refried beans? It's tacky, distasteful, disgusting, and gross. And I think that Lauren the Mortician is a complete fraud. And I think that the um, content that she posts is so incredibly insensitive. I don't understand how she got a following as big as she got, to be quite frank. I think this kind of, um, I think that this kind of content is completely out of touch. It is completely uneducated and it's gross. That's how I feel about Lauren the Mortician. Um, Runkle of the Bailey has been doing a great job covering kind of the legal side of things. I've kind of taken a little bit of a break from that because I didn't feel like there was anything that I could really um, have a real conversation about because it's just kind of been kind of a couple of nothing burgers as of lately, but I will pick back up on that and bring out an update when I feel like there's something to really talk about. But Laura the Mortician, I, I mentioned in another, in another video, she had a golden opportunity and she decided to do this. And I think that she, like you, you blew the opportunity. Congrats. All right, you guys, so to finish out this video, I wanna to talk to y'all about Sarah Joy. Sarah Joy goes by That Plain Girl over on TikTok. She has a sizable audience. Right now, as of filming this, she has five, almost um, 587,000 followers, and it says her P.O. box is in West Virginia, in Fort Ashby. So um, either way, this is somebody who has built an entire platform off of being plain, which is from my understanding, very similar to like Mennonite or Amish. And she has done sponsored videos. She gets millions and millions and millions of views on a lot of her videos. Like her views are pretty consistent. Um, you know, once in a while there will be one that maybe gets 600,000, but a lot of them do get over a million. And she has a very dedicated, um, audience that watches her content. Well, the other day, this video came up on my For You page and it has 11 million views. It says, I deeply apologize if I have offended anyone for stepping outside of the community guidelines. And basically, she um, is signing off of her TikTok. And a lot of people were very concerned for her well-being, her safety. Is she um, in trouble? Is somebody trying to hurt her within that community? What's going on? You have a lot of people that are parasocially connected to you and they are going to be very concerned if a video like this comes out. Totally understandable. Popular Amish TikToker Sarah Joy has posted a message that has everybody concerned. Hello. This is the last TikTok that I'm going to be making while I'm still in the community. It has been very nice to get to know all of you, and I appreciate the opportunity that you have given me to talk about the community. I wish you all well. Well, what happened is this other creator, what is her, um, I, I forgot her username. Hold on one second. Her name is Kenzie. Kenzie came out and basically said 
Sarah Joy is a liar. This is who she is. She dresses in normal clothes. I know her. It's actually her and her sister. Instead of the person that she calls her friend, it's actually her sister. And she shows a whole bunch of photos and so on and so forth. She has a very big following on TikTok and led everybody to believe that she was a plain person. Plain people being the umbrella term for those that are either Mennonite or Amish who live lives that are separate from the modern world. And it's because of that way of living that she's not even supposed to be on TikTok to begin with, but decided to come on here in secret to show representation for plain people. Which is why everybody got so concerned when she posted her last TikTok saying that this would be the last time that she would post a video while she's in the community. She looked so scared of this video, which made people believe that she was in danger, so people were calling the local West Virginia Sheriff's Department trying to send welfare checks. One of the last updates we received was from Sarah's friend, Anna, who said that Sarah was okay and that she was asking for privacy at this time. However, there appears to be more to this story than meets the eye because this user claims to know Sarah Joy in real life, saying that it's all a facade and that Sarah is not a plain person, not Amish, not a Mennonite, not any of it. I met Sarah and her sister, Anna. Yes, her sister, Anna, not her friend, Anna. Through mutual friends that I had at church when we were teenagers. I went to one of my friend's birthday parties. They were there. I met them. They were nice, a little bit weird because they were homeschooled and I don't think they socialized very much. Um, they, they seemed very sweet. Throughout the years, I've come to realize that Sarah has a lot of mental health issues. I've seen her go through like different phases, like, you know, kind of like emo phase and then whatever phase. I don't know. I don't really keep up with her. But when I saw this video, it really pissed me off because even Mama Tot commented on it out of concern saying like you know who snitched on her and everyone even on like reddit pages is in, a, in an uproar in an uproar because they're so scared that the community found out that she has a tiktok when there is no community that she's associated with but i do have some older pictures of sarah and anna give me a second your precious sweet amish girl is wearing makeup <clears throat> i don't know who these two girls are so I'm not blocking them out because I don't care. This is a picture of those two and my two friends. Like I said, I'm not going to show their faces because they don't need to be involved. If they want to be involved, they can, and I'll post the, post a picture. But, <sighs> yeah. I'm blocking out the child, but um, here they are. Them with their parents. I don't know who the child is, and just in case, you know, blocking it out. Them at some family function. I don't know. I don't know who these two girls are either. Sarah at Krispy Kreme. Don't know who this girl is, but as you can see, she's not Amish or Mennonite. And now a lot of other people are chiming in and saying, oh my God, Sarah Joy is a fraud. This is somebody who built a whole, you know, a platform off of basically cosplaying, cosplaying as an Amish person. What I would like to say, I'm going to insert a couple of, you know, videos as I usually do of people sharing their concern and sharing their perspective and or opinions about it. What I wanna say is number one, if you are a plain person, you know, you can obviously, you know, wear different clothes. Like the clothing thing to me is not um, the, the absolute end of the road. The part that really bothered me is that Sarah put out this video caused a lot of concern for her followers and they are doing things like calling wellness checks and, um, you know, trying to make sure that she is physically safe and okay. It's an entire mess, but what I want to know from y'all is how do you feel about somebody cosplaying as a Mennonite or Amish person, knowing that that content is going to interest a lot of people um, and it's alleged that you just work at a plain store and you're, you know, basically while you're in uniform, you're making content acting as if you are fully devoted to this community when you're actually not. She is not an elite Amish. And how do I know? The literal electric stove behind her with the time on it showing she has electricity. The ceiling lights. The exterior of her home has very modernized windows. These types of windows are not in Amish communities. She's playing piano. She's wearing a hoodie. And plus, this isn't what Amish wear. Maybe a Mennonite, but not Amish, and she's not Mennonite. This is an Amish home here in Whitefield, Maine that I drive past every day. This is Amish. Look at it. They don't even have a yard. No shutters, basic windows. They make this, by the way. They build it all themselves. This is a typical Amish kitchen and living room. No lights, no living room, basic. 
here's a list on Wikipedia. It tells you each type of Amish group and what they allow. Basically nothing. Not even propane gas. And she's got an electric stove in her house. <laughs> it's so obvious. Are you guys blind? A friendly reminder that just because you follow someone doesn't mean you actually know them. Or that what they tell you isn't an elaborate bit. And I cannot say this with certainty, but there's someone on TikTok with photos of what appears to be Sarah Joy proving that she's not a Mennonite. And this would be positive news to me because I got worried, like many of you, when I saw Sarah Joy's video saying that she wouldn't be posting any more TikToks until she left the community. I was scared for her, reasonably so. This news would actually relieve me. Would it make me slightly upset? Sure. But not nearly as upset as the possibility of what might happen to somebody who's discovered by their community to be breaking community rules and guidelines. Aside from that, someone is being accused of having snitched on Sarah Joy. And that person has kind of been pushed off the site and they're, they've been doxxed. Their other social media accounts have been posted online. And this accusation is baseless to my knowledge because again, we're not even sure that Sarah Joy actually is a Mennonite. So this is just a reminder. Please don't dox people. Please don't assume that everything you see a creator post online is true. And I don't know, have a great day. We got another liar on our hands, unfortunately, y'all. If you don't know who this is, I didn't tell yesterday either, but this is Sarah Joy, who is an Amish TikToker. She was sharing her life being Amish, and apparently she's not Amish at all. That was all a lie. This came from a Reddit thread. Hey, everybody. So this creator, Sarah Joy, has blown up on TikTok and Reddit. I'm here to set the story straight. I have known her for over 10 years, and her sister is my best friend. She grew up in a Christian household and has never been Amish. She sadly suffers from mental health problems and has created a lot of crazy lies over the years. The pictures I posted are a couple years old, but they are of her living her regular life. I have distanced myself from her in the last year, so I don't have any recent pictures. Sarah also now lives in a different state than me. I blurred out the faces of the other people that don't want to be shown. She does wear clothes half the time, and she does work at a plain store, but she lives a regular life. She has her driver's license, and she is moved out multiple times and has the free will to do whatever she wants and on one of her most recent videos she is saying how she's sad because she can't wear stuff like other people and do stuff like other people but she can she actually wants to go to cosmetology school and her parents would help her with that and she won't but she won't actually make the commitment it makes me sad and mad that this lie has just blown up to this proportion and that everyone is so worried for her i can tell you that she's fine but mentally she's not i hope this clears some things up these are the pictures of her actually please don't leave this girl hate as she is going through mental issues but she did lie it was brought to my attention that someone is on here that I knew their sibling. I did not even really know them. Who's spreading nasty, hateful rumors about me. I was told to choose the plain community, the community that I am in, or the world. To be all in or all out, and it was my choice to make. And so I chose the plain community. Yes, I did. The girl that made those awful rumors about me, saying that I'm a scammer and a fraud, I kid you not, the last time I saw her, there's somebody opening a window over there, I was not looking to the side because there was a person there holding me hostage, you goofballs. I was looking to the side because someone was pulling past me in a truck, all right? Not, you just stop listening to so much true crime. I'm not hostage. Anyway, this girl, who I will not say her name because she is not worth my time and attention, except for to clear my own name. The last time I saw her, it was maybe 2018, 2019, before COVID. And I kid you not, I had already become a part of the community. We stood there at a wedding and had a conversation on why I wore this and why I was wearing a certain kind of clothing. I'm not kidding. This girl has picked and choosed what parts of the truth she would like to admit so it can get her attention. It breaks my heart. I'm not angry with her, but I am so just shocked and disappointed that she would do this to me. People are exposing where my family lives. They're posting photographs of my younger siblings' faces. They're saying what town I live in. People have been calling my home. Shame on all of you. I converted. I was not born into it. And it has been so clear to me. I learned how to make my own dresses. I haven't worn makeup. I don't cut my hair. I got rid of my shoes that don't match the specific guidelines for the community. And I feel like I'm never going to be good enough. And then someone coming on here and saying to me that I'm a liar. It just breaks my heart. I don't even know what to do with that anymore. My friend Gracie has been making me aware of all these different things. And to be clear, I did not follow Heather Shaw on Wednesday morning. That's not accurate. I'm not sure where that went wrong, but I was not on TikTok. I had deleted the app off of my phone to stay within the guidelines of the community. So maybe I would have my place back in it. So I could be upfront and forward with the Bishop when he comes on Sunday, that I am off of it. 
but I have come back on here to set the record straight because some people will not leave well enough alone. And I may be losing my place in the community now because of it. Anyway, just a reminder, the people you see online are real people and your actions surrounding them have real consequences. Also, thanks to everybody who thought that I was kidnapped and tried to help me. I really appreciate that. I'm not kidnapped. I'm just at my house. I hope you have a good day. Either way, I think that's going to be a little bit of an interesting conversation, but I think that's enough ranting for today. So if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.